teaching you all about chapter 13 in the Golan, Johnson, and Wanta textbook. This subject, or the subject of this chapter, is an exploration of the determinants of international news coverage in Australia's online media. That is a really hard thing to say. Even more difficult to say, for me, personally, is the name of the researcher, but I think it is Xiaoping Wang. So we're going to go with Xiaoping Wang. Xiaoping Wang decided that the media coverage internationally from an Australian perspective is likely different now than it was in the Cold War era. In the Cold War era, media impacted, the media was impacted by gatekeepers, organizational constraints, social cultural structures, and logistical concerns. In other words, media was based on what was close, what was easy to come by, and what was readily available. Is it still that way? With the advent of the internet, we are seeing just a slight bit of difference between what was important in the Cold War era and what is important today. Thus, the purpose of Wang's study was to explore the determinants of online international news coverage in the post 9-11 era through a content analysis of Australia's media. To do this, he chose two separate mediums. The first is the Australian, which is one of Australia's major daily newspapers. And the second is Yahoo 7, something that Australians use to get their news online. Wang had two research questions, which became the independent variables in his study. The research questions include the geographic distance between the host country, which is Australia, and the country being covered, and does that geographic distance affect the amount of news coverage online, or in an online news site? The second question is, is the country's land area associated with the online news coverage of that country in the host country? Again, we're looking at the land maps. So here, is it close to Australia, is it not? That's research question one. Research question two is, how big of a space does the country cover? Does that make a difference as to whether it will appear more often in Australian news or not? Landmass wise, we would talk about countries that are large in area like Russia, the United States, Canada, compared to smaller countries. Wang went a little nuts after this, in my opinion, and instead of just a couple of hypotheses, he had Nine. Nine hypotheses. These then are his dependent variables. The dependent variables. Basically, we're looking at do these things affect more news coverage that a particular nation receives in the media of the host nation, again, which is Australia. So, first hypothesis is if the country has a large population, Second is, are there more tourists to that country? Third, is there a greater trade volume between Australia and the foreign country being covered in the news? And the last is, does the, larger, does the nation have a large gross domestic product? Even more hypotheses, five more. Does the country have freedom of the press? Does it have a number of active troops? How much are they spending on defense? Is it a member of the Commonwealth of Nations? Of course, remembering that the Commonwealth of Nations is the group of nations that ultimately answer to the British Crown. And then hypothesis number nine is how many internet users does the country have? Basically what Wang wanted to know is do these things impact how much media coverage another country will receive in the Australian media. The method for his research was a content analysis. Wang selected the two mediums I talked about earlier, or the two media, excuse me, I talked about earlier, and he selected one week where he would analyze the international content of the news covered during that week. 
Then he performed a regression analysis using SPSS and provided the information in QQ plots and standard residual plots. He also wanted to make sure he had intercoder reliability, so he shanghaied a student into helping him out. A grad student helped to code about 20% of the online international news stories in order to provide intercoder reliability, ending up with a 94.7% agreement. That seems good enough to provide valid intercoder reliability. What they discovered was that there are 10 nations that are covered most frequently in the Australian news. The US, Iraq, Israel, India, China, Afghanistan, the United Kingdom, Iran, Pakistan, and the Philippines. With all of these nations included, Wang discovered that the gross domestic product and the number of international, or excuse me, internet users of a nation were major determinants of the online international news flow. Wang did want to check one more thing, and that's resulting from studies done in the Cold War era. When there were troops on the ground, that meant that the country received more media attention. So he removed these countries, the top 10 that were outliers, and ran his data again. The results you can find in your textbook and here in table 13.3. Unfortunately, active troops on the ground really didn't give that much difference to why a country might be covered in the Australian news and why not. So the results basically stayed the same. GDP, the gross domestic product of a country, and the number of internet users in a nation indicate why it might be covered more often or more frequently in the news in Australia. Wang himself proposed some future research. He thinks that you might want to use more online news sites or traditional news outlets to get a better, better understanding of the international news flow for media in Australia. My recommendation for future research might be to add a tenth hypothesis, yes, I said a tenth, in the area of sports. If something like the FIFA World Cup were being played in a particular nation, would that increase the number of news stories done about that nation? That's something else that I might include if I were to do the research. I hope that I have given you an idea of what is in Chapter 13 and what Wang was trying to do in his research of the Australian media.